can continue standing and uh, read the scripture for today. This is in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge of the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure around doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, and they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away, from their, turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Some great truth there. I think we all strive, should be striving for that crown of righteousness. Let's uh, recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. school and uh, we want to call the uh, teachers and staff up here for a uh, word of prayer and committing them to the Lord. I want to thank uh, all of you parents for uh, allowing your children and seeing that they come each day to each Sunday to Sunday school and so we call up uh, uh, our superintendent uh, Jen St. John and uh, Ann Peterson is her assistant, and uh, then the teachers, uh, Ann Peterson and Heather Sugar, and uh, a new recruit for the fall season. I'm glad to see he survived his first day today. Uh, Caleb's got the older elementary kids. I invite you to come up here. On behalf of the congregation, we want to thank each of you for your willingness to serve the Lord in this way. It is a, a great uh, responsibility and privilege to have our uh, young people and old people uh, learning the word, applying it to our lives each day. And so we want to thank you for your willingness to serve. As a congregation, we want to uphold them in prayer as well as each of the families in our church as they, we seek to bring up our children to know and love the Lord. We read in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 15. And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the, to the treasure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children 
tossed here and there by waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all respects unto him who is the head, even Christ. That's our charge, uh, not only as teachers, but as parents as well. We seek to uphold our children in prayer, give them an example, the Christian example to follow, and sharing the word together as families and in the family of God. So let us uh, have a word of prayer committing these teachers and staff also uh, to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you today for the privilege we have as a congregation to share your word with one another. Pray, Lord, today for each of this, for uh, Jen and for Ann and their positions of leadership and of teachers, Lord, we pray for Ann and for Heather and Caleb and Darren as he teaches the adult class this year. We thank you, Lord, that we can commit our way to you. We thank you, Lord, that it is only by your grace, your strength, and your wisdom uh, to guide and direct us as we apply God's word uh, in our lessons each week. Thank you, Lord, for the preciousness of your word as we heard even this morning in Sunday school that all scripture is inspired by God and it's all profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That each one who knows you as Savior, we may be complete in thee. So we pray that uh, you would uphold each of these uh, staff and teachers, help each of us as well to uphold them in prayer from week to week. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So let's turn in our hymnals to number 122, Standing on the Promises of Christ My King. And I think we better stand for that, right? <laughs> kind of hard to sing Standing on the Promises as we're sitting down. So let's all stand and sing 122.
You may be seated. We'll take some time for our prayer requests. I have a couple things written down here, but uh, uh, Janet, I have your sister written down. I don't have her name written down. Carol, thank you. Uh, does anyone else have anything they want to add? Yes. Uh, one more thing, a praise. Um, my mom um, experienced her hip was displaced last Saturday, Friday. I don't remember what day. Friday, I guess it was. Came out of the socket, and uh, they were able to get it back in, and she came home uh, on Saturday, which is pretty amazing. She's 90 now. <laughs> so she's back home. So we're, we're really thankful yes. for that. Thank you. That's for sure. Anyone else? Okay, let's bow in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can come to you as a congregation and pray, Lord, and bring these things before you. Lord, we... Uh, we just want to pray, Lord, for uh, Janet's sister, Carol, Lord, and we pray for that, uh, that you would guide and direct that situation, Lord, that uh, you'd give uh, the doctors and uh, everyone else involved, Lord, uh, wisdom and direction in that. Lord, we want to pray now for our uh, local schools and the children, Lord, from uh, whatever school they may be going to, Lord. We uh, pray, Lord, that you would uh, keep them safe. Uh, watch over them. I pray, Lord, that you'd uh, give the schools and the uh, people running the schools, Lord, the school board, and uh, I pray that you'd give them direction, Lord, in how they should deal with the different situations coming up, Lord. Uh, we also pray, Lord, for Sunday school and the teachers once again, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for them that they were willing to uh, come forward and uh, take the uh, great responsibility of teaching our children, Lord, here at, uh, here at church, Lord. Uh, we want to pray also for the election coming up in November. Uh, pray, Lord, that you would, your will would be done in that situation. I pray that the, uh, uh, we would do our due diligence, Lord, and uh, uh, vote accordingly, Lord, according to your word and uh, our convictions. I pray for the government officials and the military, Lord, all those that are in charge of our land and governing our land. I pray that you would uh, guide and direct them. Uh, show them the way to go, Lord, and I pray that your will would be done in that. Lord, we pray for uh, all the Christians around the world and the persecution that they have to go through in other parts of the world that uh, we have no idea what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis, but we pray that you would be with them and give them strength. And we know in your word it says that you give a special grace and strength to those that have to go through that, Lord. And we, can, we pray, Lord, that... Uh, uh, you would strengthen them in that. Uh, I want to pray for all the shut-ins, for everyone that can't make it to church. I pray, Lord, that your word would go out to them and give them peace. And uh, I pray, Lord, that we would uh, uh, be able to minister to them any way that we can, if we can call them or, uh, or uh, go to see them, anything, Lord, that can help, Lord. I pray that they would, you would... Uh, be with all those people. I want to pray for Andy and Alyssa and the family, Lord. I pray that uh, that you would uh, speak to them and speak peace, Lord, to that family. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, help us all to remember to uh, pray for them and uh, everything that's going on there, Lord. Uh, I want to Thank you, Lord, for uh, Danny's mom's scans coming back. Uh, good, Lord. We pray that uh, you'd continue to uh, minister her and her health, Lord. Uh, we also want to thank you, Lord, for Sue's mother and that uh, she is back home. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to heal her hip and uh, give her strength, Lord. And uh, we just... Uh, Thank you, Lord, for all these things. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, pray that you just bless this service now and pray for Pastor as he brings the sermon and uh, be with us all now. In Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, let's uh, call the ushers for an uh, offering. Preparation for the message, let's sing number, hymn number 320, Trust and Obey.
The word of life this morning comes to us from the book of Daniel, chapter 6 today. I'm going to read just the first three verses. We'll be sharing more of the chapter throughout the morning. We read in Jesus' name. It seemed good to Darius to appoint 120 satraps over the kingdom, that they would be in charge of the whole kingdom. And over them, three commissioners, of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might be accountable to them and that the king might not suffer loss. Then this Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and the satraps because he possessed an extraordinary spirit and the king planned to appoint him over the entire kingdom. Spirit of God, take these words and apply them to our hearts here today. We thank you, Lord, today for the great example in, that we have in Daniel. Think of that song, Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. Lord, we want to be like Daniel. Speak to our hearts today that as we go through this familiar chapter of Scripture, not just, re not just rehearsing the events of the chapter, but give us grace to apply these truths to our lives so that we too might be what you want us to be in this evil world in which we're living, that we might be a light for you, unashamedly living for you at home, at school, at work, in the neighborhood. Help us as a congregation to be a light and testimony in our community to the grace of God and the greatness of new life in Christ. Minister to our souls. Spirit of God, be our teacher, showing the things of Christ to us. For we ask it in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Daniel chapter 6, I suppose, is one of the most familiar chapters in the Bible. We didn't re get to it yet today, but it, it gives the account of Daniel and the lion's den. I suppose almost every one of us here, maybe every one of us, even you kids, know very well the account of Daniel in the lion's den. How he got there, what happened when he was there, and the result of his being there. But today, I want us to view the whole chapter from a different point of view. I want us to think today about these first three verses that we read. About Daniel. And why did King Darius consider Daniel so trustworthy? Remember, so far in the book, we've seen Daniel as a young man, late teens, taken captive, taken away from his city, Jerusalem, away from God's people. The city was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. And Daniel and many, many others, thousands, were taken as captives to the land of Babylon. There, Daniel began to distinguish himself. He was trustworthy. And he served the Lord faithfully under the heathen dictatorship of King Nebuchadnezzar. And later on in chapter 5, by the, that time, Belshazzar succeeds to the throne. And Daniel was a faithful witness to him. 
Remember when he saw the handwriting on the wall? Daniel made it very clear because the Lord made it clear to him. He told Belshazzar, your days are numbered. <laughs> Not just numbered, they're, they're over. You've been weighed in God's balances and found wanting. That very night, the Medes came into the city, the so-called indestructible city of Babylon, came in through the riverbed that had been dried up and captured and killed Belshazzar, captured the city, the entire country. And now we come to chapter 6. A new king's in town. His name's Darius. He's not a Babylonian, he's a Medes, from the Medes and the Persians. And we read that right at the beginning of this chapter, when he takes the power of becoming the king over this whole area of the world, we read there in verse 3, Then this Daniel began distinguishing himself among the commissioners and the satraps because he possessed an extraordinary spirit and the king planned to appoint him over the entire kingdom. Why would Darius do such a thing? Why would he so quickly, after he took power and, and destroyed the Babylonians and the Babylonian political structure, why would he plan on taking Daniel, who is now about 80 years old? He'd served faithfully the Lord under Nebuchadnezzar and the rest of them, all the way up through Belshazzar, now Darius takes control and he sees something in Daniel. An extraordinary spirit. Why did he risk his kingdom? By allowing an old man by the name of Daniel take control over most of his country. Ruling for him. The king planned to appoint Daniel over the entire nation. And I ask why. And that's what we want to think about this morning. Five thoughts to share with you from this well-known chapter. You know the whole story about Daniel and the lion's den. What made him extraordinary? And I want you to think about that in the context of the heathen society in which we're living. God is looking for people, individuals. What does it say in the Old Testament? God is looking for a man to stand in the gap. And he's looking for extraordinary people. No. He's looking people for people who are willing to surrender to an extraordinary God. So, let's look at a few thoughts that should challenge us today to dare to be a Daniel, daring to stand alone, daring to have a purpose firm, First of all, Daniel's position. Darius planned on making him the ruler over a large parts of his second in the command under the Medes. Now notice very carefully, Daniel's high position was not a one of privilege. Oh, we hear a lot about that today, don't we? Oh, the privilege this, privilege that. 
Daniel was not offered this position because he was privileged in some way or another. Daniel wasn't appointed to the high position because he was the son of a rich or famous person. Happens so often today. We hear about it all the time, right? Oh, the privilege that some people have because they're the son of some important person, get all kinds of jobs with millions of dollars and all of this, even though they don't have any, any uh, acumen, any, any sense of, of direction. But he's the son of a famous person. Daniel did not get his position because he was privileged. No, King Darius selected Daniel because of his character. Sixty years before this, as a young teenager, when Daniel was taken captive and brought to Babylon, I want to remind you in chapter 1, verse 8, of a phrase that is very important. It says, Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. That was 60 years before he now becomes second in command for the new Medes who are controlling the area. Daniel was faithful to that pledge for 60 years. Through thick and thin, through difficulties, through trials, through testings. Daniel purposed in his heart not to defile himself. And God is looking for Daniels today. In the society in which we're living, to stand alone on the side of right if necessary. To stand alone at school for Christ. To stand alone at work for that which is right. Men and women of character, boys and girls of character. Not in themselves, but in Jesus. As Daniel did, purposed in his heart not to defile himself. just like to say, whether you're five years old today, 50 years old, 80 years old like Daniel was at this point in time, when you today surrender your heart and life to Christ and purpose in your heart not to defile yourself. That's why Darius appointed him. It wasn't privilege. It was because of godly character. And God is looking today for men and women and boys and girls who will dare to be a Daniel. Second thought. Let's look more closely at Daniel's character. What is it about his character? Well, we read in verse 4. Then the commissioners and the satraps began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel in regard to government affairs. But they could find no ground of accusation or evidence of corruption inasmuch as he was faithful. And no negligence or corruption was to be found in him. What a call for all of us who know Christ as Savior. This is what you and I are called to be when we say be like a Daniel. First you notice no ground of accusations against him. Oh, they tried to find it. But they could find no ground of accusation against Daniel. Because he lived his life before the Lord. 
honest, trusting, doing what is right when all of society urged him to do what's wrong. No accusations that is based on fact. <laughs> we hear a lot about accusations too. I mean, every day, right? Everybody's got accusations against somebody else. In many cases, not based on fact either. And I think especially Christians in positions of high places, all kinds of accusations, but not real accusations. No ground of accusation. No accusations based in fact. Secondly, no evidence of corruption. His life was an open book. Nothing corrupt was hidden. And thirdly, it says there in verse 4, faithful in service. For 60 years, serving the Lord, like the Bible says, we think we heard it, speaking the truth in love. I know we hear all kinds of talk today about people who think they're important and say, I'm going to speak truth to power. But I find very little, very few, who speak the truth in love. And that's what we're called to do. Faithful in service, no negligence or corruption was to be found in him. That's what it says there in verse 4. Friends, in the corrupt society in which we're living, where are the Daniels? Few and far between. Are you willing to stand alone on the side of right? This is not just a call from Daniel, Daniel chapter 6. This is all through scripture. I think, for example, of 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. How should we live? If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or some troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. That's what we're called to do, folks. And every once in a while, we hear about Christians in difficult places being a light and testimony for Christ. Standing up for moral truth, for biblical morals, standing up for family and for faith and for the unborn in this tragedy of a society in which we're living and criticized for it all the time. Just like Daniel, we're called. But if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed, it says. That's what we're called to do. <laughs> Thought of a chorus, hadn't probably sung it for 50 years. I'll live for Jesus day after day. I'll live for Jesus, let come what may. The Holy Spirit, I will obey. I'll live for Jesus day after day. Friends, that's all that matters. That's all that mattered for Daniel. His character. When you live for Jesus day after day, third thought, we want to turn our attention to Daniel's opposition. You say, how could he have opposition? 
Friends, he had opposition because he was faithful to the Lord. We read in verse 5, Then these men said, We will not find any ground of accusation against Daniel, against this Daniel, unless we find it against him with regard to the law of his God. I want to remind you today, it was true in Daniel's day, it's true today. The spiritual op the opposition that we face is spiritual in nature. The ungodly men, when they could find no negligence in Daniel's life, no corruption there in his life, had to admit that the only criticism they could find in him was that he was faithful to God and his word. Oh, may that be true of each one of us. And may we see more Daniels in government, in society, in life. They knew Daniel could not be bribed, could not be bought. And just like today, when society sees a real Christian living out biblical faith, holding to biblical truth, biblical morals, all they can do is mock that Christian and demonize that person's biblical convictions. We see it all the time, don't we? We're in a spiritual battle, just like Daniel was. That's why we read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's where the battle is today, folks. It's a spiritual battle against the spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly places. It was true then. It's true now. We are in a battle. And the battle is not about people. It's greater than that. The battle is a spiritual battle. That's why we're seeing all the political pressure, even these days, to silence the church. To silence the church in a day like today. With all of the issues that face people today. And all people can say is, can't go to church. Don't listen to God. You got to silence this. It's a spiritual issue. Well, that the, that's the days Daniel was living in, and it's the days we're living in, too. Now I want us just to make some practical applications. Let's look at Daniel's God. You can trust him just like Daniel could trust him. I listed four areas of trust. Reasons that you can trust the Lord today. First of all, you can trust God to forgive you your sins and make you his child. Acts 3.19 Repent therefore and return that your sins may be washed away. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. What a great example we have in the Apostle Paul who was first of all Saul, right? hated Christians, spent his life trying to kill Christians until he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. And then even Paul was able to say there in 1 Timothy that I'm the chief of sinners, but I found mercy. That can be true for you today too. 
Secondly, you can trust God in the crises of your life. Daniel did. Look here at verse 23 in chapter 6. Then the king was very pleased to give orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the lion's den. Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatever was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. Are you trusting in the Lord today? Third, you can trust God with your future here on earth. Daniel trusted his future to the Lord, his future on earth. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. You can commit your future days to the Lord. Found that true many. Won't take time to give personal examples today. Just mention that. In 1972, we found that this is true. You can trust God with the future days. When the opposition seems to be unstoppable, you can rest in the Lord. And finally, you can trust God with your physical life. You know, when Daniel opened the windows to pray, knowing the full well the consequences, he was trusting God with his life. Look at verse 10. Now when Daniel knew what this document was signed, he entered his house now in his roof chamber he had windows to open toward Jerusalem and he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day praying, out loud by the way, giving thanks before his God as he had been doing previously. He knew the price could very well be and was the lion's den. You can trust God with your physical life. Like the song says, I know not what the future holds. I don't know what it holds for any of us. But I know who holds the future. You can trust him. And you know the rest of the story. How he went to the, was thrown in the lion's den. King Darius spent the whole night Worrying what's going to happen to Daniel. <clears throat> Obviously thinking the worst. And I want to close today by reading Darius' testimony at the end of that night. Then Darius the king wrote to all the peoples, nations, men of every language who were living in all the land. May your peace abound. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom... Men are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and enduring forever. His kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. And his dominion will be forever. Amazing how man who didn't know the scriptures testified specifically. It's exactly true. He delivers, rescues, performs signs, wonders in heaven and earth who also delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. You can trust the one who died for you. Are you trusting him today? Let's be found as Daniel in these days of testing. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts. Give us grace to trust in you in all the circumstances, the crises, the decisions of life, to be faithful to you. We give you thanks and praise, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn to number 298 and make that our prayer. Only trust him. Only trust him now.
Let's close in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this uh, word that you've brought to us. I pray, Lord, that we would take it with us, Lord, through this day, uh, through this week, and uh, pray that we'd meditate on it and let it guide and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll read the benediction today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Thank you.